Leanne Mackett reporting for Infowars.com. I am once again standing outside of the Westlake landfill here in Bridgeton, Missouri. Uh, just earlier this week, health officials from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services met with the fine folks here in Bridgeton, Missouri and wanted to present them their health consultation. Basically, they investigated themselves and of course they came to tell everyone that their investigation, everything is fine. We looked into ourselves and this EPA super Superfund site is completely okay. Now, if you take a look within these documents, they say that yes, indeed, if there is any surface disturbance here, radioactive particles will be released. Those who are going to be most at risk will be the workers on site themselves who will most likely develop lung cancer. But one of the other things that was interesting in, in this consultation was the fact that they could confirm that radioactive particles were being detected in the groundwater, uh, but EPA officials actually had the audacity to come to the uh, Bridgeton meeting here and tell people not to worry because the groundwater was flowing in a northwesterly direction toward the Missouri River. Well, Scott Kahneman confronted the EPA official and said, we're not satisfied with that answer because a simple Google search revealed that 80% of the tap water is pulled from that exact area in the northwest. <laughs> so now the EPA has confirmed that those radioactive particles are flowing that way. This is where they get their tap water from. And they're very concerned about that because uranium, and radium were present there. They weren't even testing for thorium because, as you recall, thorium has already been found in many backyards here in Florissant, Missouri. They're wondering just how far out they're going to be finding the thorium because of the floodplain. So the fact that they weren't even looking for it in the groundwater is pretty uh, indicative of a bit of a cover up there. Now, if you want to see the confrontation between Scott Kahneman and the EPA official, we're going to provide that link right below here in the description. So be sure to check that out. Leanne McAdoo reporting for Infowars.com. Leanne McAdoo reporting for Infowars.com. Of course, we are here covering the state of emergency with the radioactive landfill in Westlake. And of course, no trip to St. Louis to cover that would be complete without looking a little deeper into the company that was largely responsible for dumping all of this nuclear waste secretly around St. Louis. That would be Malincrot Chemical Works. Now, Malincrot Chemical Works began uh, processing uranium in 1942 for the first atomic bomb. Once they started running out of space at their facility, uh, they started shipping these radioactive waste containers off-site uh, throughout different parts of St. Louis. Um, here's an old picture you can see these materials were stored in bulk on the ground open to the elements and they were unattended and they left them right next to Coldwater Creek which we have been uh, interviewing a lot of people here who were actually poisoned by this nuclear uh, radioactive material uh, being in Coldwater Creek of course it would get into the floodplain get into people's crops this area here is now uh, currently dealing with thorium being found in their backyard um, so this is a huge issue. These people are still having to deal with this today. Now, Malincrot, they got out of the uh, atomic weapons business, and today they're actually Malincrot Pharmaceuticals. And check out their website. I mean, hello. I don't really need to <laughs> get into the details with that. But Malincrot Pharmaceuticals is basically a world market leader in medicinal controlled substances. That's right. They are one of the largest importers of opium, coca leaves for cocaine, as well as uh, poppy, um, you know, raw opium. And some of the things that they manufacture, codeine, hydrocodone, morphine products, uh, opium, oxycodone. So all the things that you, you know, other controlled substances. And so they are making these products that you're hearing a lot about uh, with, with drug overdoses and things like that. So... You know, going from <laughs> making nuclear weapons to other ticking time bombs that are affecting our present day society. Now, check this out. So you can go to the U.S. Department of Justice into their Office of Diversion Control, and you can see where they have gone with the, with the Drug Enforcement Administration to be known as importers uh, of these controlled substances. So this was just May 2015 that they filed for that, and they filed for uh, phenylacetone, coca leaves, raw opium, and poppy straw concentrate. 
And so the uh, the summary is basically that the Drug Enforcement Agency grants Malincrot registration as an importer of these controlled substances. And then, of course, <clears throat> you can take a look at the other page where they say it's a manufacturer's notice. So then they also have to go ahead and give them the thumbs up that, yes, they can use these controlled substances to create all of these controlled substances. So these are medicinal controlled. These are the ones that are given the thumbs up, even though they are made with the same drugs that we're apparently trying to stop with the drug war. So are they just working directly with the drug cartels to bring in the coca leaves and the raw opium uh, over the border? Or is the DEA helping them ship it right in? Now think about that. We already know that our soldiers are protecting the, the opium fields there in Afghanistan. And since we've been there protecting them, uh, it's actually increased about 90 plus percent. So it doesn't put two and two. And of course, Malincrot isn't the only pharmaceutical company that is importing these drugs. They're just the world market leader. Now, it's the US Department of Justice that's obviously making this huge push to ban guns and take guns away from everyone. But we'll look at 2013. So in 2013, they would say about, about 12,000 people were killed in gun violence in the United States, 30 people a day. So that's, you know, about, about 12,000 people. We'll take a look at the overdose death rates from pharmaceutical drugs in 2013. 25,000 total from prescription drugs, uh, male and female, 25,000 in 2013. If you're looking just at opioid pain relievers, which is what Malincrot specializes in, 18,000, 16,000 here. So m much, much more than gun violence. Uh, you can look at the fact of abuse here. 6.2 million Americans abuse prescription uh, type drugs, non-medicinal purposes, more than cocaine, heroin, hallucinogens, and inhalants combined. Um, these are obviously young people. There is an increase in young adults abusing these prescription pills. And then just looking in one metro area alone, more than half of the deaths involved these prescription opiates. So this is just one metro area that they're kind of collating this data from. So as you can see, Drug overdoses and pharmaceutical drugs are always popping up in these mass shootings, right? But they never want to talk about the pharmaceuticals. They never want to point out how that is always one of the key indicators in these mass shootings. It's always the guns. When clearly prescription opioids are much more dangerous, killing many more people than guns here in America. That's what we need to be talking about. So that I thought was a really interesting, a little bit of information going back with Malincrot Chemical Works, who is, you know, largely responsible for contaminating the St. Louis area while they were secretly dumping off this nuclear material, and they're continuing to contaminate the population of the United States today. Stay tuned to InfoWars.com for more reports. Leanne McAdoo reporting for InfoWars.com. I'm standing here with Scott Kahneman. He's a husband, father, and activist here in St. Louis. Scott, I know you're working really hard to raise awareness about the current state of emergency in St. Louis, potential nuclear fallout with the Westlake landfill. So fill us in on that. So the Westlake landfill is a pretty uh, incredibly large deal. Um, there's fire. There's a fire over there about ready to hit the radioactive waste. Worst case scenario, the attorney general says it'll hit that radioactive waste in December, but he didn't say what the best case was. And that's a huge deal and it could send radioactive fallout into the air. Uh, however, that same waste that's buried there, uh, my own family has a personal history with. Uh, we're standing in Weldon Spring, Missouri, and this giant pile of nuclear waste happens to be the same pile of nuclear waste my grandfather worked on as a foreman at Malincrot Chemical Company. And during his tenure, they created a bunch of nuclear waste when they, when they were refining uranium, and it ended up getting distributed. You know, not just here, but it's at several sites here in St. Louis. You know, a lot of them aren't cleaned up properly. It's just sitting there open air. And uh, at Westlake Landfill is one where the dirt's just kind of sitting there. Uh, St. Louis area airport is another site where there's some nuclear waste under a pavilion there. Uh, there's several of these sites all around the area. And so what do you think when you see this pile of rubble sitting here housing the remnants of the Manhattan Project? You know, it, it's a bit ironic to me that, 
you know, as I said, my grandfather worked on this waste and, and here we are this many decades later in 2015 uh, dealing with the same pile of waste again. Uh, the, my grandfather lost his life uh, when he was working for Malincrot due to radiation exposure. A lot of his co-workers did too. And for us, uh, it, you know, my family, it's surreal that we're ha having to watch people still get sick from the same pile of waste that killed my grandfather and my uncle who was seven at the time. It's the same pile of waste and it's crazy. We're still here, it's 2015 and nothing has changed. Sure, they put a pretty cap on top of this, you know, uh, and they claim everything is safe here. And sure, there's a fire over there in Westlake Landfill, but no one is addressing how are we going to clean up St. Louis and get it out of here? You know, there's kids uh, that are still getting sick and suffering to this day, and that's just crazy to me. In 2015, we're still dealing with Manhattan Project era, nu era nuclear waste. I didn't know my grandfather in his younger days. I, I was born in 1978. Uh, I knew him when he was older and more ill. Uh, this is him, uh, obviously, when he's not feeling so great uh, and he's suffering from the effects of radiation exposure uh, and lung cancer, in this case. And. But, you know, uh, looking at these photos, he clearly wasn't always like that. You know, he was a, he was a man, he liked to go fishing with his wife, you know, uh, my grandma. And um, it's, it's crazy to see how happy they once were and then just see this transformation from, you know, this is the man he was to the, to the man he became uh, as a result of being a part of the Manhattan Project and up through the Cold War. It really took a, pro a toll. Um, here he is with more fa with uh, family pictures, you know, again, he's not looking very happy here. Uh, his name was Clifford Drews, and uh, he, he's the first person in our family, I guess, that was really exposed to uh, this Manhattan Project sort of experimentation. Uh, not only an experiment to create the atomic bomb, but companies and the company and management of Malincrot would experiment on their employees. So my grandfather would come home from work and he'd have, he was crawling all through these facilities and he would get this radon and this uranium uh, and thorium dust on his hands. Uh, and he didn't think much of it, you know, because if, for example, if you're a mechanic, you'll have grease on your hands from, from your time at work. Well, he'd have this dust on his hands and he'd come home and hug his wife and uh, play with his kids. And radiological illness began to not only afflict him, uh, but, um, my uncle as well, his son. His firstborn son died at the age of seven. And um, uh, it was from this radioactive exposure uh, that he would have on his hands. And holding these people accountable uh, for their actions is, is, is something that we would all like to see happen. Um, but in the meantime, uh, just getting their stories out there, I think, is what is the most important because um, there's so many other people like my grandfather. So Denise Brock and the Iron Workers Union helped uh, ensure that this memorial got built to celebrate the Cold War patriots that worked here at Malacrop. And um, the Iron Workers built this arch and the names of Malacrop uranium workers are in this book. And um, there's a lot of them. They're in alphabetical order, but if I turn it to Drews, there he is, Clifford Drews, right here, Clifford Drews. That was my grandfather, and this is his memorial. So now when you mention the cancer clusters, do you think that it's enough that they have remediated this site here? Not at all. Uh, this site itself was only partly remediated, we'll call it. Uh, the, the scam with a site like this is they remediate it to a certain point. They cleaned it up and made it look nice, put some fancy rocks on top of the nuclear waste, uh, and then they declared this place a nature preserve. So because humans won't be habitating it, they can just call it a nature preserve and bring the Katy Trail through the area, and hey, we're done, right? Nuclear waste taken care of. That's what they did here. They partially cleaned it up. Now, just over the tree line uh, behind these storm shelters is Francis Hall High School. And Francis Hall High School, where my own niece goes currently, uh, is at one point, before they remediated, this place had the highest student rate of cancer in the country, among the highest student rate of cancer in the country. Uh, and I, 
people just don't understand that waste piles like this and waste piles like that are over there in Westlake landfill, they just need to be dealt with. We can no longer just ignore it. It needs to be dug up, carted out of here and taken somewhere where they can handle it.